Here we have the function r of x equals x squared divided by the quantity x minus 2. Since the degree of the numerator is one more than the degree of the denominator, this function has a slant asymptote, sometimes called an oblique asymptote. We find it by first of all rewriting r of x by dividing the denominator into the numerator. Since x minus 2 is in the form of x minus c, we can use synthetic division. The coefficients will be 1, 0, 0, since the x term and the constant term are missing. 1 will be the leading term in the coefficient, 1 times 2 is 2, plus 0 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4, plus 0 is 4. Thus, the function is equivalent to x plus 2 plus 4 divided by the quantity x minus 2. And the slant asymptote is the function defined by the quotient, so y equals x plus 2. The vertical asymptote is determined by the zero of the denominator, uh, which is 2, so x equals 2 is the vertical asymptote. I'm going to use a scale of two units for each tick mark, so I will sketch in x equals 2 and y equals x plus 2. Now we'll look for the y-intercept, which we find by substituting 0 for x, and we get 0 over negative 2, or 0. So the y-intercept is 0. That must mean the x-intercept is also 0. Let's check that out. We would set the numerator equal to 0, but the numerator is equal to x squared, and so x equals 0 is the, the x-intercept as well. So the graph crosses at the origin. And as x approaches 2 from the left, the curve approaches minus infinity. As x approaches negative infinity, y approaches x plus 2. Now, uh, w the point that we have determined is two units to the right of the vertical asymptote. I'm interested in what happens two units to the left because of, of symmetry here. We've got one branch graft. There's going to be another branch for this. Uh, this is called a hyperbola. And so 2 to the right of x equals 2 would be 4. I'm going to evaluate r of 4. r of 4 gives 4 squared, or 16, divided by 4 minus 2, or 2, which gives 8. So the point 4, 8 is in this graph. And as x approaches 2 from the left, y is going to in approach positive infinity, 
And as x approaches negative infinity, y is going to approach x plus 2. So we see the symmetry around the point where the asymptotes intersect, which is 2 and y equals 2 plus 2. And so, um, or y equals, yes, 2 plus 2, which is 4. In the next example, we have x squared plus 5 divided by the quantity x minus 4. So we'll have 4 divided into 1, 0, 5. The x term is missing. When we do the division, 1 is going to be the leading coefficient of the quotient. 1 times 4 is 4. 4 plus 0 is 4. 4 times 4 is 16, plus 5 is 21. So the given function is equivalent to x plus 4 plus 21 over x minus 4. The slant asymptote is y equals x plus 4. The uh, quotient in that expression. The vertical asymptote is uh, determined by the zero of the denominator, which is 4, and so x equals 4 is our vertical asymptote this time. So this time I'll use 4 units per tick mark. So this will be x equals 4, and this will be y equals x plus 4. Notice that the point of intersection of those asymptotes will be 4, and x plus 4, which will give 8. The y-intercept this time for our function is found by substituting 0, which gives us negative 5 fourths. So we have a y-intercept below the x-axis. For the x-intercept, we set the numerator equal to 0. And when we go to solve it, we see that x squared would equal negative 5. And the solutions would be imaginary zero numbers. Therefore, there are no x-intercepts. x-intercepts do not exist. So as x approaches 4 from the left, y approaches negative infinity. And as x approaches negative infinity, y approaches x plus 4. Now I'd like to find a value on the other branch, and I notice that the point that we have is four units to the right of the vertical asymptote. So I'm interested in the value of the function four unit, I'm sorry, the intercept is four units to the left, so I'm interested at the value of the function four units to the right which would be 8. r of 8 would be 64 plus 5, or 69, divided by 8 minus 4, which is 4, which evaluates to be 17 and a fourth. So up in this area, 
let's see, this would be 4, 8, 12, 16. 17 and a fourth would be about up here. And as x approaches 4 from the right, the curve approaches positive infinity. And as x approaches positive infinity, y approaches x plus 4. So again, symmetry around the point 4, 8, where the two asymptotes cross. We've got one more example. It's a little bit different from the first two uh, because it is the quantity x squared minus 2x minus 15 all divided by x. We have division by a monomial, so we get x minus 2 dividing each of those monomials by x minus 15 divided by x. So the slant asymptote this time is y equals x minus 2. The vertical asymptote this time is x equals 0, since the denominator is undefined at x equals 0. So I'll let the scale have two units for each tick mark, and this time we've got y equals x minus 2. And um, as notice that the intersection of the two asymptotes is at 0, negative 2. The y-intercept here is going to be at r of 0, which will be negative 15 over 0, which is not a real number, and so the y-intercept does not exist this time. In terms of the x-intercepts, we have to evaluate x squared minus 2x minus 15 equal to 0. This factors into x minus 5 times x plus 3 equals 0. So our zeros are positive 5 and negative 3. We have two x-intercepts at negative 3, 0, and positive 5, 0. Now this time, the vertical asymptote is at the origin, and it would be interesting to look at the reflection of these two points across the y-axis. And so uh, I'm going to look at not only the fact that negative 3, 0 is on the graph, but ask what r of 3 is. And not only know that negative 5, 0 is on the graph, but ask what r of negative 5 is. So I think if you look here, you will find that both of these evaluate to be negative 4. And so I am going to plot each of these points, uh, 5, negative 4 will be about here, and 3, negative 4, about there. Now, this is a little bit tricky to graph. The curve goes up and down like so, 